Yeah, it seems like driving on ice, but there's a trick. A magic one, I want to share with you all this tutorial, so check it out. But first, intro. I've recently saved this metal structure that was the base from a kitchen chair. It's a nice design, very good metal, so let's start to make the frame. So my goal is to have a very small vehicle, as smaller as possible, so this will be the frame itself. It's pretty small so that I can fit it in the car, move it around and just transport it back home to charge the batteries of it. So the smaller it is, the better it is for me as well. So I fix everything here on the fixer table. This is so important because if you start welding, uh, the extreme heat can deform and bend the metal itself, so it will be not anymore straight afterwards. So now I weld all the components and even if the welds doesn't look so pretty they hold up pretty well the frame itself without problem now let's take these two kind of wheel are like wheels from shopping cart it, they look like plastic but i guarantee you inside there is stainless steel are pretty sturdy it's said they can hold 150 kilos each without problems i take then a square tube mark the half of it and i can then cut it into pieces this is so important because i want to fabricate myself something that can hold the wheels but they can, they can also change angle of the wheels itself pretty easy so i can use a chop saw to do this can start to weld one of them on the back side of the stainless steel frame that composed the cart itself. I'm adding this square tube because it is a little bit wider and I was thinking that maybe the original frame was too small and maybe can be unstable. The wider it is, the more stable it is, but I remember you that I want to have everything as compact as possible, so this is almost 50 centimeters wide and I think it's pretty good for me. Unfortunately, the original wheels are made in plastic, are covered with plastic, so I have to add some stainless steel tube here and I can weld this part inside the other square tube we cut earlier. So it's such a precise fit that I have to use the power of the vise to push it carefully all the way inside. I make this modification on both sides, so on the right and on the left of this square tube, and as you can probably understand, this will be the place where the wheels will be mounted later. So I can weld the components, making sure to don't deform the tube so that later on the wheels can be pushed inside without problems and it came out pretty nice i really love it it's so comfortable to wear these gloves while I'm welding. It's the first time, usually the position to make a very precise weld is to keep the torch in this position so the hands will not shake, but having gloves allows me to play like pool. I mean, I can keep the hand on the table and keep the torch very stable with my fingers. This, this allows me to keep the fingers much closer to the weld and I don't risk to burn my fingers or my hand, even from sparks or even from very hot metal that is on the metal base so these gloves are so handy for this project let's keep with the project i now have to think a connection way to connect the two square tubes i was planning to fabricate myself this it is hinges like door hinges very strong one so i took a very rigid metal rod that fits perfectly inside some round tubes they have the same dimension of the square tube itself and you can imagine that after aligning the two square tubes i can weld the two parts using these round ones so the first connection is here on the top i weld the left and the right tubes and then the bottom part here in the middle so now you can imagine that after removing all the fixer i can swivel the part without problems i also added some oil so it's a very very smooth movement i can now test the wheels now it's just a test later i will hammer better the wheels all the way inside the hole but it's such a nice precise fit i choose to use these huge wheels because later i want i want to use this cart even on grass or uneven terrain 
Now I have to weld like a lever so that I can change angle of the wheels. This is so important. So I decided to use very strong rod as well here so I can apply a lot of force without bending or destroying everything. Now it's just a matter of adding a little handle so it's much more comfortable to uh, use this handle and this I recycle it from a uh, mountain stick so it's so compact and so nice to keep it in hands. This can change angle of the wheels. Wheels are the most important part of this project. This they work like shopping cart wheels so you can imagine that you can just push a shopping cart, pull it, throw it and it will start to spin on itself without problems. The reason is that wheels are free to spin in any direction without problems, without any force at all. So it, this is a free movement. If instead of mounting the wheels perfectly at 19 degrees, we start to incline and change angle of the wheels like 30 or 20 degrees angle, they stop acting like free wheel and now they act like the tail, the back tail of an airplane it will keep stable and straight the cart all the time. It's so important to have a lever so that we can change angle of the wheels and pass from 30 degree angle, 20 degree angle, to a perfect 90 degree straight vertical line angle. When it's vertical, it's free to spin, like you can drift all the time. If we instead decide to incline the wheel and have it at a shallow angle, it will start to act like, uh, it will say, go in this direction and don't drift at all. So this is so interesting, we can play a lot with the lever and decide which angle to keep it. We can also do it like a middle way and have a very small effect of drifting. So it, this wheel seems all made in plastic, but inside there is a metal structure I tested with, with a very strong magnet and this will hold up my weight without problems and I weigh more than 100 kilos, so these are very sturdy. Or, or maybe, let's hope so. <laughs> Now I have to fix perfectly level the frame on the workbench. This is so important because now it's time to weld the front wheel. I'll dismount it from an electric scooter and I can weld it perfectly at 90 degrees in all directions. This is so important. Usually the front fork of bicycle and motorbike are placed at an angle. In this case it has to be perfectly straight at 90 degrees. I add lateral structure so the, the wheel will be so strong because later when I will use it, it can accelerate and have a lot of lateral force. I replace the original wheel with a motorized wheel, always from the electric scooter itself, and you can see it moves perfectly at 90 degrees in all directions. Now it's just a matter of taking a steering wheel so that I can, tr I can control the cart itself and adding the electronics. These are also took from the electric scooter and this instead is a steering wheel from a toy car of kids. So I can play all the electronics here but maybe it would be also a great idea to add this that is the accelerator and the brake the gas and the brake on the handle itself but this is, will be for the future now let's fit fix here the steering wheel and can be also a very great idea to print it with a 3d printer and makes things safer but I already know what to use to replace this steering wheel. Wow the frame is coming great I love the design but unfortunately because it's so compact and small is also unstable. You can see that it's so easy to bend it and fold it and just fall on the side. So a clever idea is to add two small wheels like this one, one on the left and one on the right on the front. But this doesn't have to keep weight, are just there little um, centimeters from the bottom, so from the ground. In, in case I fall, this will touch the ground and keep me stable without falling away. So let's put them here on the front. I can paint everything here on the front, so the project is almost completed. I also clean up all the mess I'm making with this. And now it's time to think about the chair. I was so lucky, I was driving the car and I found this office chair, office chair throw away in the garbage. So I can remove the cushion from it and I was planning to use the back side, like this, that is the back of the chair as the seat, but unfortunately I'm too big and my butt doesn't fit on top. So I have to use the original seat and I place some black duct tape so I close the holes. I also added the original electric scooter battery and I can turn everything and see if it's working. For 
the first time, I soon realized that the steering wheel was so flimsy and was so dangerous, so I replaced it with this. It is a stainless steel disc brake from a motorbike, and I also added the back seat so that I don't fall out from the back. So let's go back to the park and test it on a very, very smooth surface and see how it works. And this drift card is so fun to use. Much easier to learn it how instead than the drift bike we just made last year. <laughs> that project took like a couple hours to learn how to ride it. Instead, this took only five minutes and I was so confident that I start drifting around. It's pretty scary when it turns 180 degrees and you are driving backwards and you don't see where you are going, but <laughs> that's the main goal. Being scared, having fun, drift around, so nice. So remember that I'm here only to share my passion and give you inspiration. I know this isn't the first tutorial about drift cards, but yeah, this is all made with things I have in my shop and I want to share with you the project. It was so easy to make it, like a couple of days. So at this point, I leave you here my two previous projects, the drift bike as well, and see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial. Ciao, ciao.